<laughs> Welcome everyone to the Manga Alert Podcast. It's it's me, your boy, your host, Gear Third Manga Reviews. I'm here today with my co-host, Shrug Pood. Um, Hello! We, have a, we also have with us suspected white supremacist, Neptune Plays. A what? And of course we have... <laughs> Of course, we have Black Clover Enthusiast, Base Senpai. Welcome, everyone. Yes, it's Senpai, not Senpai. Yes. Jesus. I thought when you said white supremacist, I was here, I was expecting you to say uh, based. No, no, that's you. I, we don't oh. we don't forget the stuff you say on here. Shit. <laughs> uh, all right. So, um, as you guys may have noticed, uh, Old Shaman is not here. This is the first podcast ever that he could not make it on, and that is unfortunately because yeah. he has. Uh, he has contracted a bad case of gonorrhea, so uh, <laughs> he will not be joining us today. Uh, and because of that, we will not have a theme song because it's tradition. He he uh, he announces the theme song, but unfortunately, he can't do it. So no theme song. I'm sorry. Just get him to send like a five second clip, oh. saying like, "And here's the intro." Oh, that that's actually a great idea. We'll do that. Come to time in your history as a manga tuber where just things don't go your way. And today, my friends, a dark day indeed has happened. Manga Alert has decided to leave me be, to outcast me for this particular episode. It will be the first episode in the history of Mongo Alert where I am not present. I will be back next week though, hopefully, in the next two weeks, whenever the next Mongo Alert is. Can't believe this. For all the hard work and dedication that I dedicated to the Mongo Alert podcast, this is how they treat me. Theme song. So uh, before we get into our main topic today, we do have a sponsorship. Uh, this this podcast, I believe this is season two, episode eight, is sponsored by uh, by uh, Tony Vellant's new manga series. Well, I guess not new. Oh! Radiant. Um, the new anime just came out. It is critics are calling it one of the best shonen series of all time. It has a nine point seven on my anime list. Uh, everyone, go check it out. All right. The shopkeeper is best character. You you guys gotta support English or French uh, mangaka. Yes. Or if not, you're doing uh, a disservice to uh, the foreigners. Yes, please go out and buy, Thank good, buy every buying. volume of Radiant and watch the anime religiously as it airs this season. Uh, our main topic of today is a series that is quite quirky, I must say. Uh, ha! <laughs> my, my Hero Academia. Wow, what, what this this crazy series, you know, it it uh I I like to consider it the third best Shonen Jump series ever made. A lot of people uh, disagree with me there, but um they're, behind what behind what they're on. I'd say behind uh, JoJo and Promise Neverland, and and but I'm sure for based he would put Black Clover as number one, and then my no, let's not get too technical here. Let's not get too. All right, so my hero. Ah, shit taste. My hero Academia. First up, we're going to be starting. It's been a while since we've done a podcast on the a single series, but we're going to start off. Oh, well, first I should say we're only going to be covering the material that was in the f- the first three seasons of the anime, just because I know a lot of people only watch the anime, so that way you know everyone's happy and we get a chance to talk about the shit filler episodes. First off, we're gonna we're gonna get started by going down. Go, going through everyone, uh, how how did you guys uh, get into this series? Well, let's say we'll we'll start with uh, Mr. Racist over here, Brandon. Uh, I'm I'm gonna let Shrug go first. I'm gonna gather my thoughts a little bit more. Oh, so you didn't even prepare? Yeah. Really? No, I, I I'm just so shook. You, you I come gotta, in this call spouting all this garbage about how you hate minorities, and now 
<laughs> oh no. I'm prepared if uh if I may do so. All right, fine. If I ever run for Congress, people are gonna pull up this this clip. How did, how did you first get into Boku no Hero no Academia? Well, as one who follows Shonen Jump Weekly pretty religiously, I oh, yes, pretty true. much pretty much was aware that either Weekly Shonen Jump was pushing this series called Boku no Hero Academia, or it because it was constantly actually beating uh, One Piece on the popularity charts. As it should and it was, be. And hmm. more often than not, it was number one on the table of contents, and that's a pretty big deal. It, it lasted, it was pretty much number one, almost between, it was either one or two between uh, One Piece and it's uh, My Hero Academia for about a good 30, 30 weeks, to say the least. Wow. So once the anime came out, I uh, watched the anime and then I caught up on the manga. Okay, so mine uh, is a little less interesting because I don't follow Weekly Shonen Jump religiously. Good. Or at all. Good. Anyway. I respect that decision. Uh, so, I was in my local comic book store, um, where I normally buy all my manga from, and I was looking around, and I saw this one series, and I was like, oh, I thought it was an American comic, but in a manga style. I was like, okay, that seems pretty interesting. So I read the first volume, I brought it home, and I read the first volume, and I was like, okay, this is actually really good. But then I looked into it more, and I looked it up online, and I was like, okay. Wait, are, so this is a series that's... Are you admitting to piracy? Whoa. What do you mean to piracy? You said you looked it up online. Surely. No, I didn't look up the oh. series online. I like I looked up My Hero Academia right, online. I was going to say. Meant. Slow down now. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, and so what happens, I brought it home, and I looked it up, and I was looking at it and apparently it was a really popular series and weirdly enough I watched like a For Never World video Ew, about it why? because I was like that was like the only video out about it at the time Gross. and so I was just like so I was just like well it seems like a really good series so I read a little bit o- ahead online what? and I yeah I did Whoa, are you, oh. I don't oh, con- I don't condone a sorry power. I'm I'm a bad child. Don't don't sue me, please. I'm just don't kidding. Me off. As you guys know, um, the Manga Lord podcast is sponsored by Kiss Manga and their Patreon. Go donate. To oh us. yeah. <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> but I kept on reading through the series, and then I got caught up with it for a little bit, and then I slowly fell behind. But it's still like one of my favorites that mm-hmm. I have, probably like in my top three. All right, uh, Brandon, you finally ready? Or... Yeah, I'm good. So, my my story is a little bit more interesting about this. So, before I used to read manga, I, I was solely anime. I, I didn't even touch manga. Uh, and one of my friends uh, showed me this show called My Hero Academia. And so I checked it out, I watched the first season, and I thought it was really, really good. I, I really liked it. Uh, and then, one time while I was just scrolling through Amazon, uh, I saw the My Hero Academia uh, manga, and I was thinking to myself, okay, this would be pretty cool to, to have. So I bought the first volume, and I, I read it over again, and uh, I've just been keeping up with it ever since. So My Hero Academia is actually my first ever manga volume that I bought. Wow, you're young. Yeah, it holds, it holds a special place in my heart. As it should. That's crazy. It just shows how small I am. That, that's true. For those who don't know, uh, Neptune is 12 years old, and he's been 12 years old for about five years now. So, At least he has good taste. Yes, true. He does Indeed. have better taste than Shot. At least in manga, not video games. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. Yeah. We, 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 Man, Shot's fire. I changed my name to your, Neptune Plays Twitch Minecraft, and all of a sudden nights. I play Minecraft? Get out of here. Mm. All right, no so I guess my story... Back in ye old 2015, when I still thought One Piece was the greatest shonen series ever, oh, how blind I was back then. <laughs> anyway, right. I saw I saw some cucks online hyping up this new series, My Hero Academia, which at the time just got its English release, it, the, the volume first volume came out, uh, and that's when I was like really getting into manga collecting. It's around the same time I started my channel too, so I I got the first volume. And I believe I waited for a couple to come out before I started reading it. 
and I, I it was good. I enjoyed it, but I, I didn't really get super into it. Um, but then, about I'd say, uh, I don't know. I think I read like maybe the first four volumes or so, four or five volumes as they came out, but I never really got super into it until this was around the time the second season of the anime came out, and everyone was hyping it up, giving getting a ton of praise. Um, so I was hearing stuff about it all all over the place. And uh, I was also at the point where One Piece was getting kind of shitty, so I'm like, oh, hold on, maybe this isn't the best, maybe I should find something else. <laughs> so I decided to watch the My Hero Academia anime, because at the point where it was in Season 2, it was pretty much all the stuff I had already read. So I watched through the anime, and because of how fantastic of an adaptation it is, I, I really enjoyed it. Got up to Season 2, uh, well, it was about halfway over at that point. Um, and I couldn't wait any longer, so I, I hopped on um, good old Kiss Manga, which, uh, go, go support their Patreon guys. Um, and I read pretty much the entire series all the way through, and it quickly became one of my favorites, because, like, after that point of the anime, like, we get into the, the whole tra the, uh, training camp arc and all that shit, so good. I absolutely love that. I read it all, like, super quickly until I was right caught up, and I've been following it pretty much ever since, and I love it. I love it a lot. And there we go. So we can chalk up the success of your YouTube channel to My Hero Academia? Perfect. Yes. <laughs> it would be 100%. Because if I had not read My Hero Academia, I probably would be a, a Dragon Ball Super uh, YouTuber. And, oh, uh, no. Uh, next up, we're going to be, I guess, going through all of the story arcs and just giving our thoughts on them. This is what we usually do. Uh, there are a lot to go over, but it's also the, they're also all quite short because uh, there's 10 to be exact right yeah you see base base came prepared he he has like all of his notes he's like, 124 chapters animated he's like uh he's like noah with his notes <laughs> shut up you stole my joke you bitch i, I, did, I did steal his joke he made that what? Joke <laughs> no i'm pretty sure gear came up with that one first nah uh, you no. weren't here i swear i came up with that i also i also no. i also start stole the quirky joke from someone on the discord earlier today so Oof. Yeah, I Gear guess you could exposed. say I'm a I'm a villain. Um, Damn, that was awful. Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> that, that was pretty. That was that was pretty bad. <laughs> oh no! Oh, this is a mess. Like, like we make fun of Shaman all the time, but he really holds these podcasts together. I don't know how we're gonna go on for another fifty minutes. No worries. Ah, I Shaman. got it. Uh, anyway, uh, the entrance exam arc. What do you what do you guys think of this? This was the the first four chapters, where Midoriya is kind of a bitch and he he wins by chance. Yeah. Okay. One one thing I want to say on that. Okay. This is something I had always wondered, ever since, like I I had seen the anime and read the manga. How the hell did Mineta get past the entrance exam? So this was actually confirmed in one of the volumes. Someone asked the question, and Horikoshi answered. Basically, Mineta used his squishy balls. And by, by the way, we're going to talk a lot more about Mineta as this goes on. No, he, used yes. his, oh boy. he used his squishy balls, and he, like, put them in the circuit boards of the robots. And it, like, oh, wow. jammed them up and shut them down. Okay. I hold a lot more respect for that little dude now. Yeah. See, he's, he's a smart kid. He, he's not all perverted and... A predator. He's he's smart. He knows what's yeah, up. Yeah, I'm pretty. No, I'm pretty sure he's just like a predator. Well, he, he, he's no. both. He's both. <laughs> well, the first arc definitely introduced a couple of characters. Oh God! Some here we go. Main characters: Izuku, Bakugo, All Might. It, it pretty much that's about it, in, in terms of characters. Um, Who's All Might? I don't know. Some some background character. The greatest superhero of all time. Anyways, uh, I think Horikoshi actually stated that he made a mistake making Bakugo tell uh, Deku to go jump off the a roof of the building. <laughs> I think he was too harsh with what? Bakugo's character in the beginning. Nah. Uh, I mean... But they did set up Deku to be a very unlikable, weak character in the beginning. I'll give him that. I didn't. I just felt bad for him. He's definitely weak, but I wouldn't call him unlikable. In fact, yeah, honestly, no. he's one of the more likable shonen protagonists I've seen, just because he's not like 
fucking. He's annoying. the most true. No, true. His character development's like, good. Weak character I've ever seen, yeah, at least in the beginning of the series. He's kind of relatable in a way, cause like, you know. But at the same time, I, I liked Deku in the beginning just because, he, he just kind of like broke the mold of like normal shonen characters, cause I like we've had like non-powerful oh, yeah. shonen characters at the beginning, like Naruto. Sh but okay. in some sense, he at least still had some ability at the beginning. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Izuku Sha literally had nothing left. Yeah, well, what I like about with his uh, bullshit earlier today, he was like, "Man, it's such a cliche to have a weak main character at the start." I'm like, "No, it's not." Literally, <laughs> literally almost every battle shown that I've read, like the first chapter, always starts off with, with the main character beating someone up. Like, they they always have room to grow, and they'll always find villains who are more powerful than them. But like, literally, I look at almost every shonen on my shelf here, like. Chapter one starts with the main character beating someone up. Like, <laughs> well, what I like best... about um, My Hero Academia in particular is how they showed the growth of Deku, and they kind of showed like he started from from absolutely nothing, mm. and and you know through a stroke of chance, and he was given an opportunity, and he took that opportunity, and he really grew. Yeah, because like the first couple chapters, we it's like what like ten months or so. We goes flies by real quick, and we we just see like a supercut of him training, like yeah, yeah. That was that was pretty cool, and he gets like ripped. Yeah. It reminds me of another uh, shonen MC that didn't have any powers. Oh no, let's not do that. <laughs> Asta from Black Clover. Stop it. All right. Do guys, well, do you guys on remember the like um, the beginning of like I don't know, it it was a filler in in the anime, the beginning of season three. How they Ew. did like a race in the pool, right? Well, we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Yeah. What? Well, what are you doing? Well, I'm just using this as an example, but like, have you noticed how how much he changed from when he first started? Yeah, yeah but we're ripped. gonna get there. We'll get to there. Well, yeah, it's the, just it's on the, the topic of Izuku we'll, being buff. We'll we'll discuss his growth as we move through the story arcs. Come on now. Yes, sir. We need to have good cohesion. All right. Anyway, quirk apprehension test. What even is this one? I, I can't even remember this. This was the one Throw where... Throw the ball! Uh, yeah, this was I the one... I go through that ball. Yeah, this was the one where Eraserhead was testing uh, Deku and saying if he couldn't self-destruct, he technically couldn't be a hero. Oh, right, this is when he, like, threatens to expel everyone? Uh-huh. This was cool. I like Aizawa. This was a good way to introduce him. He's like... All right, everyone. If you're shit, you're getting kicked out. And obviously, it was it was all a bluff, but it worked. It helped helped everyone develop their powers or whatever. They were shooting balls. Not much else happened, I guess. I think he's a great character. I think he's a little bit overpowered and uh, kind of, in a sense, he's not. He can't be really included in a lot of stuff. But overall, I think he's Eyes a great on? character. Yeah, he's kind of a. We'll get I don't there. know, man. Have you have you have you tried not blinking for like a whole minute? Yeah, that's yeah. It's it's actually staring quirk has this. a pretty major drawback. <laughs> so, someone like comes up and tickles him. He's screwed. <laughs> yeah, he sneezes. He's what screwed. What kind of so, tickles? Some kind of uh, someone just comes up with like blows in his eyes. Up, oh, game over. Yeah. <laughs> that's all it takes. Anyway, a battle trial arc. There's all these, like, tiny arcs in the beginning I don't remember. Well, yeah. <laughs> this was the one where they uh, are trying to get the item in the... Uh, this is the first fight between Deku and uh, Bakugo. Oh, yeah, 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 in the building. Right. Yeah, this was the free comic book day one. Cool, cool. Nothing else, Nothing happened here either. Next. Oh, no, no, this this was a big uh, Bakugo what? taking a, an L, technically. This was yeah. the... This was... The start of Bakugo's character uh, getting humbled throughout the series, in a way. Yeah, I guess, because he, uh, I guess he, with that L, he's like, yo, what the fuck? I thought that was the best. Well, when he came, he was, in a high school, he was lauded as the number one student. He was, like, the center of attention, and then he comes to a this school, uh, and he just, he isn't the center and of he attention. sucks. Mm -hmm. He's just everyone's everyone's unique in a way, and no one stands out. You know, Except for well. That tends to happen when you go to like a number one thing. It's like you're number one in in a like insignificant 
place, and then you go to the big leagues, and it's like, oh, okay, I'm, like, the worst out of all of these. Yeah, and then this arc really introduces Yuraka and Ida um, yes. as well, kind of. Even right. though they kind of was Ida. In the last... Fuck. All right. <laughs> Kenya, whatever. It's I don't know. Two eyes. What? What do you want me to do? Ida. Sonic. Ida. You... But you said you claim you're such a big fan of the series when you don't even know how to pronounce their names. I can't speak Japanese. That's all I'm gonna say. Well, clearly not, because you misspelled senpai in your username. <laughs> <laughs> this is very true. Okay, next up, the unforeseen simulation joint arc. Oh yeah. What? This was uh, the arc where they go. This is the arc where they all might fights the Nomu and stuff, and yeah. essentially you no, need. These uh, arcs. Gee whiz. These are uh, these are actually unofficial named arcs. Oh uh, well, well then. Because you, you just went to the wiki, I'm guessing. I did. But I, I <laughs> the wiki would at least know. Yeah, the shit. wiki. The wiki stated they were fan made. Yeah, but like I, I'd assume they'd take like the official names of the arcs. If they. Ouch. Whatever. But well, they did introduce uh, Shiragaki, Kiragiri, a couple other uh, fodder characters, but nothing too. Yeah, um, all these villains. The, the the best part about this arc is that we finally got some spotlight on Mineta. Um yeah, because he was really? like, I can't even. He was there. I think he groped with the frog girl. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we got a I, good, good establishment of his character. His balls. In this arc. I think he did. I actually think he did. This was also the first arc that um, revealed to us that Kaminari is in fact the traitor. Nani. Possibly yes. Yes. Um, wait. Yep. <laughs> what? Say again. <laughs> Well, that's what, you guys, what? that's what you guys get for not getting caught up to the manga. Come on now. All right, hold on. We're talking about, like, season one stuff. And even these people don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> How dare you? I'm kidding. It's a meme. No trader reveal. Yeah, it's a very it's a very 4chan-esque. Kaminari deep, is we'll, we'll deep talk Alex about, Jones. We'll talk more about that when we get to the trader part, though. Anyway. That's what I thought. They also have... Uh, I believe uh, Horikoshi didn't actually make Todoroki into like a main character like gonna be a main character because as you can tell by his hero costume he looks stupid in in the first season <laughs> and honestly yeah because like he really doesn't play much of a role a uh, role in the first few acts either right like you don't even know no, his you barely even know who Todoroki is, is at first like Mineta has more of a spotlight in season one than Todoroki right I believe you only find out that he is one of the three recommendation students and that's it yeah so mm. It's unclear if he had ever planned Todoroki to be a, a bigger character, but kind of glad that he ended up deciding to go with him. But yeah, this first arc, or, well, I guess this is, like, the first, like, big, more serious arc, because the villains show up. I thought it did a pretty good job introducing some of the villains, some of the their crazy quirks, and then we had All Might come in and beat up the Nomu. It starts a bit of a trend of uh, Midoriya getting his ass beat, not being able to do anything. <laughs> so yeah and that that is where the first season of the anime ends and overall it's a pretty good first season it doesn't really get to any of the crazy juicy stuff but it's pretty enjoyable uh, what, that all might fight was pretty that oh. music oh yeah that you was say great. run you say run is one of the best shonen yeah. and like reading, like, reading the manga like this arc, arc isn't like super crazy but the anime like builds it up so much, and there's this huge climactic fight, and it looks amazing. It's <laughs> like that's one Dude, of the reasons I'd when... honestly prefer to watch the anime over than reread the manga, just because of, of how good the animation can be at its at its peaks. It's it's pretty fantastic. I remember, I remember when the anime first came out and it ended like almost. Uh, I, I think it was like the the rescue came and then it ended, right? Something like that. I don't know. It's been a while. But they they really kept you interested for season two. Oh like, yeah. Bravo. Oh yeah. And we got like a post credit scene. We probably oh, yeah. did. I can't remember what what was in it. <laughs> the symbol of peace. Sure. Anyway, then we kick off season two with the UA Sports Festival arc. Uh, another generic tournament arc that ripped off Hunter Hunter. Am I right? No. no. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. They also introduce a couple of. Uh, New characters, a couple of Class B characters, mainly Kendo and Monoma, 
And also Tetsu in, Tetsu. And Manga Fukudashi. <laughs> is that, who is the best character in the entire is series. Is that the manga character? Yeah, he has the guy with the speech bubble for a face. No, that's... Okay, you're wrong. <laughs> they introduced him here. I'm not wrong. Uh, they introduced him, but he's 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 not the best. <laughs> well, I'd say that he is. He's pretty good. Um, he's up there. Anyway, a lot of people like uh, old shaman who haven't read it like to compare this to other shonen tournament arcs, and it is a tournament arc in the shonen series, which you know, pretty long-standing trope. But I do think it it really sets itself apart, especially with like the beginning parts with the the uh, activities they play, where they got to like go around and tag people or some shit, whatever they were doing. Uh, yeah. And we like we really get to see all of their quirks in action in like a big group setting, which was really interesting. And uh, yes, even the one-on-one fights were really cool because we got to see how different quirks went against each other. Like with um, Uraraka and Bakugo going at it, and she would like use her gravity powers to lift all the rocks and stuff that after the rubble that Bakugo exploded. You know, cool stuff like that. It's stuff that's the type of stuff I really love about this series. And, of course, we got your big emotional stuff with Todoroki uh, finally becoming a main character, all all of his daddy issues. Um, (laughs) His mom, like, spilled coffee on him or something. All that good shit. It was a great fight. It reminded me me of a a photo that I saw. um, uh, It it showed some guy uh, sunburnt, and then it showed uh, Todoroki uh, sunburnt. Uh, Oh, (laughs) oh. Oh. Oh, no. Ha! Yeah, I don't know about ha! that one. Mm. Ha! But, uh... Ha-ha! They did also <laughs> introduce a, one of, a personal favorite character of mine, Shinzo, from General Studies. Oh, yes. Uh, he is, uh... He's quite the interesting character who really did doesn't have much to do until now, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Uh, and arguably the best girl, May. From uh, the mm. d- Department of Support. No, she's kind of like a female Mineta. She's kind of creepy. How dare you? Except not as she's she's not as likable as Mineta. She's not as uh, predatory. Uh, I don't know about that. She's pretty. She's pretty predatory. I mean. I don't you know. Like about the girl I, I, with I'm, the, I'm, the babies. The babies. Yeah, the one who makes the babies, the the machines. All girls make babies. I thought we <laughs> talked about this. She calls them her babies, damn it. Right. This is true. But it also shows how Deku has, has grown since season one in terms of uh, power. And um, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Instead of destroying his arm, he only destroys his fingers. Good job. Yes, that's also a... Major plot point for the next, uh, the next season. One of the things, like I really, like we were talking about Midoriya earlier, but one of the things, like I really like about his character, I mean, it kind of sucks for him, but just the fact that he has to be so conservative with his powers, because he has like this crazy power, but in the beginning, like if he he knows that if he uses its full power, he's gonna like kill himself. So <laughs> he's got to be really careful, and even when he does use it, like he can't do it without like. Per- almost permanently damaging himself so he's got to be really careful about that that's one of the things I really like about it that's it also this this also series does a good job of while it has the overpowered quirks you also see a lot of the negative drawbacks from the quirks as yeah, well yeah that's, that's the thing like no one seems like extremely overpowered like you look at All Might he, his quirk is super powerful and he's the strongest hero but even him he can only like at the beginning he can only keep his form for a couple hours a day right so there's like uh, I think he had two I think he had two hours. Yeah. Each yeah. day. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so like all of them and like people like Bakugo, he has a super powerful quirk, but he's like he's too crazy. He's, he's gotta learn to come. Yeah, him. because uh <laughs> if it, explosions rat will ra- like rattle his body and mm-hmm. just the drawback is too much. Yeah. But so speaking of speaking of Bakugo, he's also got he, sweat. he also won. He won the tournament, but mm. he also took the L because he couldn't. He didn't feel like he won legitimately what a against. Twist. Midoriya didn't even place because he's a loser. Our, our main no, he did not. No. The top three, I believe, were Bakugo, Todoroki, and uh, Tokoyami. Yes. 
Birdman. The edgy one. Wait, so what was the final? It was the final uh, Deku and and. No, no, Midori no, didn't even was... make it to the final. He he got zapped. Yeah. Was... Oh no no no! Sorry, it was um. What was it? Ureka and uh, Bakugo, I think. No, it was, the final was Bakugo and Todoroki, I think. No, the semi-final yeah, was the. Uh... Yeah, I can't remember who Tokiyami fought against, but it probably wasn't important. Tokiyama fought against Bakugo. Right. That makes sense. All I right. thought Tokiyami got third. Yeah, he did. Um, yeah, anyway, so while that was going on, uh, yeah. Ida's brother uh, gets his ass beat by the uh, the hero killer Stain. Nice job. He doesn't kill him, though, so the name is kind of a lie. But um, that mm -hmm. sort of transitions us into the next arc, the versus hero killer arc. So, how about this? This is a good arc. I, I like this arc, except I felt like Stain was a bit short-lived. Like, I, yeah. I, I felt like he was introduced as a character that was supposed to be, like, a mainstream villain. Stain uh, really, yeah, he's kind of just evil bad guy. Yeah, just kind of um, later on, it's like he was sort of... He was like a small villain that, that made headlines because of, you know, a, a short amount of time where he just was going rampant. Well, apparently he he was an S ranked villain, which not even the Nomu were S ranked. So uh, well, in the world of uh, heroes, he he's actually like a big 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 deal. Except he got yeah. No, I'm just saying it flew by so fast that it's like it's like he wasn't very significant in the story. He just kind of well, that was the drawback of his quirk. He he couldn't take on multiple people at once. That mm. that's kind of the big drawback. But I will say though. Even though I found like him as a character a bit underwhelming, like the actual fight was really suspenseful because like, oh, yeah. you knew this guy, he he wouldn't hesitate to like murder them, and he was swinging his knives around. They get injured pretty badly. It was pretty wacky. So overall, it was pretty enjoyable, and we saw Midoriya got got his ass beat even more. And I believe this is when he finds out that like if he keeps using his powers, uh, he could easily get fucked up for life. So. But yeah, just cool before though, this, this they like... introduced uh, Gran Torino, and he learned right. how to do the full, the full, uh, full cow. Right. Yeah, he meets his Yoda, Yoda character, um, who was all Might's master back in the day. And uh, back to the stain, the stain arc. I think that this was the first instance, besides back when uh, Shigaraki first attacked with the Nomus, where like. He gets real experience, but he's he's showing his tactfulness and how he's very good at, at strategy and relaying information. And he's just he's an overall you know leader. So it, it it's the first time we get to see it put into like an actual fight. Hmm. Yeah. Anywho, the final exams arc. Uh, this is when they all fought their teachers, right? Great brush. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. I mean, this was, this was I, I mean, this was, uh, what do you guys think? <laughs> I, I thought it was cool to watch uh, Bakugo and Deku against, uh, against All Might. Yeah, but, that was kind of uh, interesting, and it was like, because they had it, I can't remember exactly how they have it set up, but like, it was the way, like, the, the the kids obviously like couldn't beat their teachers in sheer power, so it was like set up in a way where they could still You could like, escape, yeah. There was like yeah, a Yeah, that's what they were doing. They, they were trying to, to escape, right? Mm -hmm. So it was a way like they didn't have to use their powers to defeat the teachers, they just had to like outsmart them. And the teachers were at, they were kind of evenly matched because it was two against one. But yeah, we got some fun fights there. The anime actually extended upon a lot of them. And uh I wasn't it, it was pretty good that that's the type of filler I'm kind of okay with because it's like well they like they showed brief glimpses of all of the fights in the manga but the anime just really showed like the full things for each of the students which I kind of like because it gives us a bit more development on the other characters and the insights into their quirks and stuff I, I think it was better though that it was in the anime and not in the manga yeah honestly because I felt like if this was in the manga it would have gone on for out. too long. Yeah, yeah. Right? Because it would be like one chapter for each person, and then it would go on for weeks. Like, So yeah, I, I am pretty happy with how they uh, went about that, though. I, I think that's one thing I like about My Hero Academia, is 
between the anime and the manga, but like both of them, the pacing is really well done. Oh yeah, like, like even for the OG manga, it's it's it's. It's very yeah. well done with the pacing. Because, like, it as you know this, like, long. all of these arcs are super short. We're on, like, what, volume 7 or 8 now? And we've gone through, Not like, f- five arcs. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, it really wastes no time. And the anime is just great. It's it's consistently well-paced. And it's, of course, because they go on breaks and whatever. Um, and they got a good team working on it. Yeah, pretty cool. We also got uh, our first uh, taste of the uh, the romance in this series in this arc, where oh um, boy, where uh, Aoyama gets out from Araraka that she uh, she wants to you know Detroit smash our uh, our Midoriya here, so that's a thing. I'm very that's glad that they don't focus on that very often. <laughs> I think the better I bet the better relationship was the relationship between Bakugo and Deku Fuck. being Bakugo taking an, another L having to work with Deku mm. to to get the win. Yeah. Like so even though we got the like win, he took the L. Mm. So best ship Midoriya Bakugo. Got this. Please. Um uh-huh. I think this I don't know if this was not part of it but this is also this I think a, a while back Bakugo is also kind of getting to know he, he's starting to put together the pieces that Deku maybe is is like has like All Might it gave Deku the quirk well he had a couple of times right where he was like how the hell did you get a quirk and then like Deku even came out and said he's like oh gave to someone else <laughs> little idiot but but nobody really figured out but he didn't realize who it was and then later on well it's hard to figure out what like that he has All Might's quirk because you know it breaks his arms all the time. My arms. My arms. No. My, leg. my leg. Getting ahead of ourselves there. Um. <laughs> not, not yet. Um. All right. So then they like go to the mall, and this was uh how season two ended. Oh yeah. And because like the thing with season two ending where it did, like it was kind of, you know, like it wasn't anywhere near as climactic as season one it was just mostly set up for the for the next arc but like this was such a crazy moment because it's when Shigaraki like comes up to Midoriya in a public setting and like gets his hand around his neck and he's like yo listen bitch <laughs> <laughs> you could have killed him I don't know why I didn't oh, you I think I prefer a set up for the next Mama. season than a cliffhanger like if it was an episode I would have preferred a cliffhanger but if it was uh, the end of a, the season I think set up is probably and then I believe uh, it teases um, all for one at the end of that episode it does so oh, yeah. it's like oh shit and then if you weren't hooked before you're like well season three is going to be pretty wacky and all I'm thinking of right now is like the How I Met Your Mother song, uh, "Let's Go to the Mall," and like Shigaraki's like really creepy smile in the background. Oh, that's a <laughs> that's all I can. That's a fantastic song. I love that. Write that down. Write that down. Put it in the put it in the, as the theme song. Edit in there. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, coming off the hype of season two, we got a, we had a long six month wait. All this hype, all these trailers coming out, posters for the new season. Everyone's excited. Everyone who knows the manga knows that shit's going down. So they Before we decide, start that. So they decide to start off the season with a, a very shitty filler episode. Uh, and yeah, that was great. Love that. Followed by the uh, the infamous uh, Twitter craze of hashtag Todoroki dies in season three. Oh yeah, that happens too. Um, well, what do we think about the total consensus of season two? Oh, as a whole, season two, pretty damn good. Definitely There's a step big up from season one in terms of pretty much everything. Not that season one was bad, but you know, obviously it was just getting started. Season two. I really think they really the picked up the animation in season two. Oh yeah, like some of even the fights, though it was, even though it was double the length. Yeah, the some of the fights <laughs> like Bak- Bakugo and Todoroki's fight looks absolutely amazing. And one of the things I also love about the My Hero anime is that. The fights are only as long as they ever need to be. Like you see, other shonen series, they have like ten episode fights, but oh, no. my hero has like five minute fights. They could be the biggest fights in the series, and they're only a few minutes long because that's all you really need. And they're perfectly paced, and they have amazing animation. It's great. How hard is that, guys? Come on now. Okay. Yeah. They're like, hey, we're gonna redo Dragon Ball Z, but without the filler, and it's still like two hundred episodes. Like. Yeah. 
yeah, so overall, quite, quite good. Anyway, but yeah, so season three kind of started off with a dud, in my opinion. I mean, like, what even was that episode? I guess the stuff with yeah, the was funny, but... Like, I'm cool with filler every... I don't know, it depends what kind of filler it is, to be honest. That yeah, fair like enough. I just don't think they should have really started the season with this because it was mostly no, just I don't think so. it was mostly just a recap episode. But I don't think we needed the recap because the training camp kind of starts off with them all using their quirk, which serves as a good enough recap. So, well, I believe season two there was a thir- episode thirteen point five, and there was a, a that start of ep- season two was a, f- a filler like recap episode, if I remember correctly. Was it? I, Actually, I think so. Oh, I think there was, but I skipped it at the time because that's because uh, there was a bunch out already. So I, I guess they did that too, huh? Well, <laughs> Christ! Oh, this is bad. <laughs> Who writes this shit, man? Anyway, uh, moving on to the training camp. This is the moment. This was the arc that made me realize just how great of a series this was. Like this whole arc, I absolutely love it. Mm-hmm. It's so good. <laughs> Oh my god. It is. They mm. introduce a bunch of key characters. Uh, they show some of the uh, characters from Class B getting some spotlight. Introduce Muscular. They introduce uh, a ton of the League of Villains characters. Dobby. Twice. Toga. Twice. Twice. Toga. All these, all these great villains. Don't forget um, the pussy Q- cats. We got Q Tom Jones. What's new pussycat? Yeah, the pussy, uh-huh. we got the pussycats. The best characters. Even though most of them suck and get their asses beat. <laughs> Big facts. They're like, here, we got these pro heroes with you, so if any villains show up, you'll be fine. Uh, they all, like, got destroyed in, like, ten minutes. The best thing I like about this, because, like, at this point when I was reading the series, I was worried that it might become formulaic. I'm like, okay, the villains are going to show up, they're going to beat all the students, then, like, All Might will show up or something and beat them all and the villains will lose again. But, like, the complete opposite thing happens. Like, all the good guys lose. Like, half of the students get seriously injured, and they just... And they kidnap Bakugo, which was their goal, and they, they just win at the end of the arc, and it's like, the fuck? <laughs> that, that was an interesting point. Midoriya does have his big fight with Muscular, and he technically wins, but at the same time, he's basically <laughs> paralyzed for the rest of the... Yeah. My arms. <laughs> yes, it, it goes back to what uh, Eraserhead was saying. It doesn't matter how powerful you can be, but if you're useless after a fight, mm. it doesn't matter. Yeah. Which came to bite him in the in the booty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that whole and this was also when they, of course, realized that there must be a traitor among them because how else would the villains have known where they were? Hmm. <gasps> Had to be Kaminari. Who could it be? Kaminari? I still think it was Kaminari, but also teamed up with uh, Hagakuri. I think the two of them are in cahoots as traders. Oh. Yeah. I, 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 you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna leave a bold prediction here. All right, it's Mineta. Nah, it's not Mineta. I think if it's not like the facts, kind of if there's a tra- if there is actually a traitor, it would. I think a lot of the facts state it's Kaminari because the original drawing for him looked very evilish, like he looked pretty evil. But if I was if I was to make a random off off the counter bet, I'd say it would be Yuraka getting paid money to be a traitor. <laughs> no, <laughs> if I I, I don't think it's Yuraka. Um, I think it's Ayama. And uh, I'll also say Hagakure because man, she's really two faced. You can just see it. Here's how should be, here's how I see it going. Should be They're all enjoying lunch in the cafeteria. And full disclosure, this hasn't been revealed in the manga yet, so we're not spoiling anything. Uh, they're all sitting in the cafeteria on a normal day, then all of a sudden, uh, they hear gunshots and they're like, Oh, what's going on? Uh. And they see a floating uh, gun she mowing down people in the hallway and they're like, Oh uh, my god, it's Hagia Curry, right? And uh and then she's invisible. So we can't see her. Demonetized. Yeah. Yeah. So then what the fuck? So like a bunch of them run into uh yeah, like Midori and Mineta, they like run into a classroom, they barricade themselves yeah, yeah. Midori and Mineta and Kaminari, they like run in, they barricade themselves and he's like Mineta's like, Hagia Curry's gone crazy. And then Kaminari's like, we all go a little crazy sometimes. And then he, like, stabs Mineta. 
This is the uh -oh. most crackpot. I think my Uraka has more merit than this. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know, man. It sounds pretty foolproof. Yeah, because as you know, my hero is very predictable, so that's obviously what's exactly Guys, what I think that we're missing the big picture. I think All Might's the traitor, <laughs> all right? Whoa. He's the symbol of peace. That would never go. Uh, speaking of the symbol of peace, Rip, the next Eric, uh, <laughs> the high Dark Raid Eric. Wait, hold on, can I, can I leave a comment before we move on? Sure. Sure. I, I do like, like, all, all sarcasm aside, I do like how they haven't really shown us who the traitor is, and, and like, there, there's not really any clues that we have, because, like, a lot of shows have done that where they just hit you on for, like, three episodes. Yeah, like, they mentioned they who it was, it. and barely hear anything about it since like yeah. you know he's, it's just waiting for the bombshell moment right like some I people know, probably know, even yeah. forgot there was a traitor <laughs> yeah like you know in Erased when like oh, they just God. kept yeah. <laughs> they just kept revealing things over and over and you were like yeah, okay I, I'm pretty sure I know who this is and it was who you exactly who you thought it was right yeah but here it's but just they haven't done that at all on this I think I, I prefer that better because, like, people have their crazy theories, uh, which is why we bring up, like, Kaminari. But honestly, we really don't have much of a clue. Like, <laughs> we have no clue. We have no idea. Yeah. It, it's, to be honest, it's better that way because they can just drop the bombshell and then he can reveal how he yeah. did it. And then it will all make sense. You know, I mean. It's Midoriya, man. <laughs> <laughs> Midoriya, Midoriya's like twice. He has a split personality. Whoa. Hmm. Sounds about right. Like one one side of Midoriya wants to become a hero, the other side wants to become a villain. He's paying the villains to come capture himself. Oh yeah, that's why he's, you don't expect. He's it. letting the villains know so he can defeat them and become the best hero. Whoa! It's like ah. it's like in Incredibles when Syndrome would like have the robot destroy the town and then he'd go and destroy the robot so he could become oh, a maybe, because maybe he had the button why, to blow it up. Yeah. Maybe that's why that girl. You remember that girl who likes uh, Deku? Maybe they're just in a Toga? secret relationship, and that's why uh, that's why she clings to him. Yeah, to what Toga actually does look like they're actually in love. I didn't know we some, had our tinfoil this is hats. Some on. Groundbreaking news, boys. No, this is real. This is. I would have brought mine. Ooh. I've been wearing my tinfoil hat ever since I was born. Mm. <laughs> anyway, um, moving on to the hideout raid arc. This, they really wasted no time at all solving the current predicament. But oh, before at the start of this arc, this was where the anime onlys were going to be like, oh, here it comes, Bakugo's turning oh. to the dark side. Oh, this was the best. This was the best. Because, <laughs> like, <laughs> this was another Sasuke 2.0. This is another reason I, I just love this series, because it, it really plays with your expectations. Like, no one was expecting the training camp arc to end how it did. And the same thing here. Like, everyone's like, oh, well, they have Bakugo now. He's joining the bad guys, obviously. And you get to that moment, he's like, come on, Bakugo, join us. And all the anime onlys are like, oh, they're ripping off Naruto. And then Bakugo yeah. just like, well, what does he do? He, like, beats the shit out of... He blows up everything. Blow, blows up his face or something. It was great. He attacks like, uh, Kiragiri, <laughs> is what he does. Yeah, and and uh, yeah, and Baku was basically like, "Fuck that, I'm I'm a hero, like all Explosion. my cool." Explosion. <laughs> and then it's like, "Oh well, crap!" Now he, they're probably gonna beat him up. It's like, "All right, put him to sleep again." And then all of a sudden, all might just burst through the wall. He's like, "Pizza delivery." <laughs> FBI oh yeah! They're, they're just like we're thinking like oh this is probably gonna be a long arc. They got a lot of stuff to do and plan, and then it's just like nope, we're doing it now. <laughs> Mount Lady put takes the truck on her on her foot and <laughs> oh man, this was well paced. I think this was very they were he was pumping out good content at this time. Yeah, yeah. This was like probably the the probably I'd say the best part in the manga. Just the the training camp like back to back with the hideout raid really fantastic and I love how like our main characters Midoriya and them like they go off to do like their own investigation not knowing that the heroes were about to like attack and they really don't play a big role in this arc they're mostly just spectators until the end when they save Bakugo so that was a really interesting perspective because we don't usually get that type of stuff where the, the main heroes don't really do much um, but, but then the big dog was introduced. Yeah, then we have uh, All for One, who 
uh, you know, we're another another thing subverting expectations. We think this guy is going to be the big bad guy, evil villain for the whole series, and he ends up getting his ass beat. Well, <laughs> well, maybe he wanted True. us to think he got his ass beat. True, but he still got his ass beat, and it's like, whoa, didn't expect that. But at what cost? Hmm? They made him out. They made him out to be the the music that he had, his soundtrack. What he did to Best Genist and a couple, yeah, he, I think, uh, Kamoi yeah, Woods. And he sounded Mount like Lady. he'd be around for a couple hundred and more ep- uh, more episodes, but uh, <laughs> try like two. He he's a very he was a very scary uh, villain for the midpoint oh, yeah. of the season, and I believe and even though he gets his ass beat, like he's still really intimidating. Just in his cell, he's like laughing. He's got no eyes. He's like nah, nah, nah. all according to Kaikaku. Well, this was also what you mean by the fights are very short. This fight was like half an episode. Oh, there, yeah. There, this fight did not last long. There was honestly very little chore- like fight choreography. Yeah, they just It was just mainly punch just a, a few times. punches. Yeah. The, the best part, though, was when, uh, what's it, uh, they, they teleport Gran Torino and All Might punches them. <laughs> that was... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, that was great. <laughs> And yeah, oh, we also can't can't forget when uh, they teleport Bakugo away right when All Might's about to catch him. He's like, nah. He's big. That was good. That was a meme scene. Yeah, that was great. The other meme scene is when they're like looking into the Nomu factory, and it's like, look over there with the binoculars, and then you cut away to like, you know, some porn or something. Mm. I don't. I don't think about. It. I don't know about that one. <laughs> um. So yeah. So All Might. He uh, he shits the bed. Well, not really, but he uh, he loses his powers. Rip. Well, m- maybe the maybe the bed gets him. Hmm. And this is another instance of where the number one most popular character, Katsuki Bakugo, takes another L in the series. What do you mean he escapes? He's like, yeah, let's get out of here. Yes, but he is the reason. He believes he is the reason why All Might lost his powers. And he is also, he was only the only person who, who got caught in that uh, in the previous arc. He was the only, he got kidnapped. He that lost. is true. He does kind of suck. Although I will say, the, uh, the, uh, the best animation in the whole series is probably that scene where Bakugo shoots himself into the sky. Oh my god, that was smooth. <laughs> that looked real smooth. <laughs> that was like 100 frames per second there. It was... I'd say it would, it, it would be up there with uh, Shoto or Todoroki versus Deku, and I think maybe the the fight at the end of the season probably took more time to animate than the entire season. Probably. Mm. Probably. Alrighty. Uh, what happened next? Provisional oh, hero license exam ten. A bunch of characters introduced. Kind of. Kind of interesting pacing. It was there was some filler. Mm. Uh, oh god, yeah, there was some it, filler. It, it didn't. It, there, it was hard to follow the all for one, one for all fight. To be this, honest, no matter this, what they yeah, did, this, it would have been tough. This is probably my least favorite part in the series. Not that it's bad. It's just it's coming off from you know like the best part in the series, and it's just kind of eh, sorry. Yeah. The, the anime the, inter- the, the anime definitely didn't help. There was one episode that was like in almost entirely filler. It was just more the thing where it's just showing another perspective of the battle, but it, it really this one I really didn't do much for me. They got like these characters. It's like, well, we we are Rick and Morty fans and our IQs are are far superior or something. Whatever that was. Um, sure. And then like midway through the arc they have a completely unrelated episode just to promote the movie. It's like... <laughs> it was... There was... Okay, there was a reason why that episode happened. Yeah, I know there uh, was, like, some stupid holiday or something. I don't know. It's some holiday in Japan that happens, and it, it would either have been no episode or that... Like, we wouldn't have gotten an episode, period, or we got an episode to promote the movie. So it, <sighs> it definitely seemed out of pace... Or out of place yeah. and it definitely didn't feel right but it, w- it was either that or no episode it was actually the lowest episode high, it was the lowest rated episode of that whole season yeah it was like a five or four or five it was it was bad 
Yeah, it was bad, and, like, it just didn't help, like, it was right in the middle of when the action was getting good. <laughs> like, it was just so weird. But, anyway... Right when Killer then, Whale got introduced. Yeah, Orca Whale, Whale Orca, whatever his name is. Um, Gang Orca is Gang his name. Orca, yeah. Um, that guy's bad. He was, so, yeah, like, the, the end of this arc picks things up quite a bit. Uh, we, of course, have to reveal that uh, Kami is actually Toga. What a twist. Oh, well, yeah, no, that, she that she me. was well. Yes, yeah, she, she used her quirk. Like we didn't actually know Toga's quirk until this point, which is why I love the reveal. Because like you you don't think about it. it's like oh yeah we never actually learned what Toga's quirk is, and then we finally find out it's like oh shit. <laughs> she does, and she also in this arc she does get Deku's blood, and she also gets I believe she gets Yuraka's blood in the in the earlier part of the season. Well, yeah, because she does turn to Yuraka in this in this arc. Yeah, she and also yeah, gets a huge yeah. lady boner uh, for for Midoriya. Yeah, she's an interesting one. But they also introduce Psycho and Telia, which was the filler character with the IQ quirk. Yeah, fuck who was that. literally no. a meme character. Yeah, no, get get that shit out of here. I like the guy who um, I forgot his name, and but NASA. his quirk. The world one guy, right? His quirk was like the meatball quirk. And I freaking love that quirk. I thought it was like the funniest thing in the world. Meatball I cracked up oh, every yeah, time yeah. I saw it. I was like, ew! It's, it was so gross! Dude, it looked like Mitty from, from Made in Abyss. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yikes! Yeah. That is... How oh, does no, no one made that comparison? That's... That, I can't no. believe you guys are doing Seji like that. Wait a second, no, I'm pretty sure I tweeted about this. Hold on a minute. I want to die. <laughs> Elevator music plays. Doo -doo -doo. Yikes. Anyway. That's funny. So enough of that garbage, because best character, uh, Mirio, gets introduced next. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I mean, he's he's great. He's a great character. They I think they did a good job on him. Mm -hmm. People are going to be excited for season four. Insert vault what? boy tin tin joke. Where's his clothes? He looks like Lucas from uh, from Earthbound. Yeah. Uh -huh. Whoa. Good original meme there. Um, ha. Huh. Have you guys heard Mirio's dub voice? Because it's the best thing I've ever heard. Yeah, he like did I? I heard it. He's like, hey there, know. friend. Are you the new first year? Oh, oh, I do love a good. I do love a good friend or something. It's like I do love wait, a good who, troublemaker. Who? <laughs> wait, hold on. Who's his voice actor? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I could look it up real quick. I will say though, on the topic of the dub, I don't watch the dub usually, but from what I've heard, the best yeah, voices is. are Mineta and Twice. It, like I have heard that the dub is good though. Like I, I, I have some people saying that like. It's one of the ones you should watch the dub for, possibly. Like, Mineta, I check out the dub when Mineta I get. Mineta has a I lisp, got. and it, it fits so perfectly with his character. <laughs> I think, uh, I, but I, like, uh, I, I mean, the I haven't really watched much of. I actually probably haven't watched a full episode of the anime. I've only watched what? Uh, what? I've only watched like clips, and so. Oh, so you're a from fake what fan. I've seen, We've what? been talking about the I anime this whole time. You haven't even seen it. I'm sorry. I'm manga only. <sighs> Oh my god! I, so you, I so am you haven't, absolutely you haven't seen the sex scene. You haven't seen the sex scene between Mount Lady and Kamui Woods that was anime only. <laughs> Heck yeah! <sighs> Woo! Hmm. That what? That's not true. But uh, I, I mean, I, from what I've seen of the dub, it, it's it's pretty good. There aren't too many like uh, like memorable voice actors. No, as, like, Christopher the main Sagat. Cast. Plays a great. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Hear me out. Hear me out on this one. I was talking about as like the students. So like Midoriya, Bakugo, uh, Ida, Uraka. They don't really all have very memorable voices, but like Christopher Sabad voices All Might, and so that's like, oh man. Hmm. But it. Th that's just like my thing. I didn't really like stick out to me too much, it, but I thought it, at least it's not Bryce Papenbrook. Oh, that guy. Yikes. But this is also... Hey guys, the... I'm gonna kill all the titans. Yeah. And I'm also gonna find the seven deadly sins. Yeah. And beat Sword Art Online. Oh no. 
But also the climax Become of the, the season. the Wizard King. While, while the all for one, one for all fight was probably the, the crowning jewel of the, of the season. Bakugo versus Deku Part Two. Yeah, was very so we get, well done. Then we get into this, and this was like building off like what, like you say, how uh, Bakugo was like feeling all this remorse because he thinks it's his fault that well. Partly is his fault why uh, All Might lost his powers, and then he's like, Ah, Midoriya, I hate you, and then they have a big fight, cause a bunch of trouble, then they get punished. No, no, no. I don't, it's, it wasn't like that, buddy. It was... <laughs> Bakugo was feeling that he, he loved All Might, and he felt that his love wasn't being... wasn't the right way to go about it. Why was Deku getting All Might's attention and he wasn't? What was he doing wrong... While succeeding, being this great, great prospect, why was Deku the center of the of all the attention? Who someone what? who followed ba- Bakugo, who was always behind him. Why was this guy? Why was all of a sudden Bakugo chasing Deku for All Might's uh, attention? Yeah, and what about Mirio? Where is oh, season four spoilers? Never mind. Karma sucks, I guess. But um, we have Bakugo finally getting his first W. Uh, in in this uh, in three seasons, we get we cap it off season three with his first win. Mm-hmm. I'd say I'd say he won the tournament. Well, I don't know. He, he got the uh, he got he got that one extra day of house duty. So like, that's true. Yeah. He had the clean, and they were calling mm. him trash boy. He did have the clean. But yeah, so the season kind of wraps up here. We get a bit of a look into. Well, I guess it really ends with uh, the fight with Mirio against all the class. Which was great. And he bodied him. His quirk is so good. And I'm glad this was in season three so we can talk about it. But he, he has like my favorite quirk in the series. Like it's permeation oh, it's is seems OP, but as they describe it, yeah. it's it's not as OP as you make it, they make it out to be. Yeah, he just makes it just the way he uses it. Like it's a lot of work to to get good with it. Basically, they're saying like he needs to be super conscious of like which spots he's making see-through and stuff. Where did his clothes go? Like, when he makes his full body that, like, he has no senses, right? So it's like, he really got But if you guys want to know, um, what, uh, what that guy's, uh, voice actor is, uh, his name is Rico, Rico Fajardo, no, it's Fajardo. Is this another Made in the Abyss reference? No, this, this is his voice actor, and he plays, uh, some dude from D. Gray Man and Rintaro Okabe from, uh, from Stein's Oh, that's him. Is indeed interesting. Definitely wouldn't bring a bell to me. I am a mad scientist. It's so cool, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, I think season three was the best season so far. Oh yeah, even though uh, it had like a couple dot episodes from filler, it was very very two good. filler episodes and, and like one uh, that was like half actually filler. three, three technically yeah. three. But uh, over yeah, it was fantastic. Like the highs of this season were like some of the best. Like it's in the entire series. I mean, season four is going to be great, but I still believe that this this is the best content in the series so far. Um, and it really hyped us up for season four because we got the introduction to I don't think they said his name, but you know that guy. And uh, you know the villains are still on the move. Yeah, because we got oh yeah we got the overhaul. Mm. Mm. Well, the next season, I think, is going to be interesting for me because I haven't read past. Um, so you don't what know anything. Has adapted. You're going in blind. Just, just about. I, I have. I ordered season, f- uh, or not season, uh, volume fourteen of the manga, and I have it, but I haven't read it yet. The one thing that's going to be interesting about season four compared to the others is that I'd say most of it, if not all of it, is going to be one entire arc. Right. Huh. That's what I'm more curious about: is if they do 12 or 13 episodes, or they decide to do 24. Yeah, because I, I mean, there's this is like 50 chat. Like they can definitely put this into 25 episodes. And it's not 41 chapters, 41. and if they usually do two chapters per episode, which is going to so, leave a, a, a chunk. I'm 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 betting it's going to be 25 because they have I think 20 volumes out in Japan. Oh well, they can definitely make a 25 episode season. I'm just like we're we're talking about if the arc will be the full season or not. Mm. Because the thing about this is that the arcs that come after it aren't really that crazy, so it would be a bit anticlimactic to end the the season with like the 
the babysitting arc. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I'm really concerned with. I don't think you... I Personally, I don't think you end season four with the cultural festival or whatever the arc's called. Yeah, I, like, I don't think that's a good idea. Yeah, but it's also like, will they be able to like have the internship arc, which is the next one, in this in the full season and not be slow like eh. would they usually do two episodes two chapters per episode if there's it's 41 chapters that's about so that would take it to about 20 episodes maybe there's a few filler maybe you can they can add some filler make it yeah i could see them adding filler during the internship arc with just like random characters but that that's like one that'd be like one episode i i can't and then four you'd have like three or four filler episodes possibly yeah well either way we have some stuff to look forward to did someone say characters dying for the first time what um no oh boy and i think that's gonna be it because we've gone on for pretty long we uh there's a lot to talk about like just just one like if you can compare this to other series like it's just so fast paced so many things happen in it in such a short amount of time because we've talked about like what 11 12 13 episodes uh, 13 volumes and it took us a full hour the new shonen jump series that started in 2014 have all relatively had a very fast pace i i love my hero academia I love this about new shonen. Like they really don't waste any time. You, even though I don't like Black Clover, like I respect it for having like, like, a fast pace, right? Stuff like Promise oh, yes. Neverland, which I love. I I love Promise Neverland so much. I know I was hired on it before, but I honestly think it's the best shonen jump series now. But like that's ending soon, and it has like ten volumes. So like, <laughs> the, the, is it really? Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it does. It, like it, it, like in total, it's probably gonna have like. Like fifteen to twenty volumes. Yeah, it just yeah, entered the final. Yeah, I might act, start yeah. picking it up now. It's so good, but um, but yeah, and like One Piece, like <laughs> when we did our One Piece podcast, it took us. It was about the same length here. It took us this amount of time to talk about sixty volumes. Like we could just talk about all of that because, like, while it's long, it's mostly just these big chunks of plot that take up a huge amount of time. And, it, like, it's just so different from back then. Like, you're never going to see My Hero or Black Clover have, like, an arc that goes on for two years. Like, <laughs> no. And, and no, it's, also why, it's also why it's so fun, My Hero, to read week by week. Because, like, they're always moving on to new stuff. Like, you're never stuck on this one spot for too long. Yeah, but, I yeah. I mean, these arcs go 13, usually 10 to 14 chapters, give or yeah. take. Mm. I think the one they're currently on may go a little bit longer just because of uh, what's exactly like what's going on. I think it yeah. with how they're doing it. Uh, mm. But other than that, I think the pacing's well. I think this is the standard. I hope more series take the Bones approach of doing this. I think Promise Neverland is going to just animate the first the first arc in thirteen episodes. Black yeah. Clover dropped the ball, uh, <laughs> and oh, then. Utope. I, I don't know how to pronounce the name. The people who did Fate Zero picked up uh, Kimetsu no Yaiba, and they're going to be mm. animating that dark shonen series. So that could be... dark. It's it's bloody, all right. So Ooh, breaking uh, news, uh, that guy Boo Shaman on uh, on uh, Gear Server just said that he read the second volume of, uh, of Black Clover, and uh, yeah, he says, uh, and I quote, it's just barely serviceable so far. Well, we'll have to get him on for the Black Clover podcast. It, no, he's not even close. He has to get... The, I told him, chapter 40. 45, 47 is where mm. it gets great. I don't know about he's that. He's just in... He, you guys are I, just reading the character introductions. And I got... But they're bad. I got to chapter 70, and it came to a point of where I was like, I don't think I can read this anymore, well, and I gave up. There you Look, go. If a manga can't there get me go. interested in the first couple of chapters then it's not worth my time. And the only reason I say that is because you're supposed to get people interested in a series. What's not so interesting they can start, about well, some juiced up shonen protagonist who's a chat. You heard it for, here first, guys. All of these series are terrible. My Hero is terrible. Um, once again, we are sponsored by Radiant. Uh, please go watch it. That, wa- watch it on Kiss Anime because we get double sponsored money that way. I just want to make one closing statement about right. this series. I know Old Shaman likes to think that Muscle, Ultimate Muscle is the best, but at least Horikoshi recognizes that he put a character that literally looks exactly like Muscle King in uh, uh, Seito Rikido. And 
to show that I think he put him in there to, to, to gauge the interest, and then he realized that this is just a supporting character because no one thinks this character is interesting. Mm. I think he, I think he killed, I think he killed Ultimate Muscle. All right, and with my final statement, I will say, My Hero Academia is better than the Big Three. It's better than Dragon Ball, and everyone who says otherwise is wrong. I know all you. People in my comments are going off like me. He said, he said oh, it's you are. One Piece. I'm like, it is. It is. You're so. you're asking for it. it so. I would say it's a top three Shonen series right now. I believe it's My Hero Academia, Attack on Titan, and I know you're not gonna like hearing this, but it is Seven Deadly Sins. Get out of here. Yeah. But like the thing with One Piece, like One Piece does no. have some really amazing moments, but it also has like a lot of just like eh. So. So. I'd say Haikyuu's beating Seven Deadly Sins of Hell yeah. Not in sales. I think it's better manga, but it's not in sales. I'm sorry to tell you. That's, in sales that's is what's matter in this business. All right, we've been going on for too long. We're going to end it here. Thank you all so much for watching. You can check all these guys out in the description, even though I'm pretty sure most of them are inactive now. I don't even know. Um, you never know. You never know. Yeah, man. Ah, you never check know. It. I believe, uh, actually, though, don't check out Neptune because, you know, he's racist. He's got like he, he posts hey man, Minecraft Olympic videos. Still, it's coming. Yeah, he he builds like swastikas in Minecraft. Like I don't even know what he's doing. Hey man, like, weird niche. I, I I thought we would keep that a secret. Oh no. All right, that'll do it. We'll see you all on the next Mongoler. Have a good one. Bye. <laughs>